Hello there. My name is Adelheid. But ever since I was a young girl, everyone has called me Heidi. I'm a grown woman now, with a family of my own, and I often wonder if my children are enjoying the happy life and the high adventures that I had as a child. I'd like to tell you my story. It had a very sad beginning, for when I was only eight years old, my mother and father both died, and I was left an orphan. My first sharp memories are of my Aunt Dete and the bright morning she took me up the mountain to go and live with my grandfather. I didn't own a trunk or a suitcase or a valise, and so Aunt Dete suggested that I wear all my clothes on my back. It was quite a struggle to put on skirt after skirt and blouse and sweater and all, and it made me very hot. So I did what I often do. I made up a song. When winter comes, it will cover me white, cover me white, cover me white. When winter comes, it will cover me white, and I am the luckiest one. When springtime comes, it will cover me green, cover me green, cover me green. When springtime comes, it will cover me green, and I am the luckiest one. I am wearing a rainbow, wearing a rainbow, as you can play. About halfway up the Alm Mountain lies the little village of Dorfley. My Aunt Dete was well known in Dorfley, and we caused quite a commotion as we went through the village. Lots of people called out to my aunt, and one jolly fat lady even walked along with us for a little way. She was full of questions about me and about where my aunt was taking me. When Aunt Dete answered that she was taking me to live with my grandfather, the jolly lady suddenly became serious. That old hermit will never stand for it, she said. A young, happy child like this, with that miserable old man, it will never work. It must work, my aunt replied. Heidi has no place else to go. The sense of excitement I had at going to meet my grandfather was lessened by this conversation, and I began to worry about what would happen if my grandfather did not like me. As the afternoon wore on, it grew hotter and hotter, and the mountain seemed steeper and steeper. Finally, Aunt Dete stopped to rest under a tall pine tree. I couldn't rest. I had to explore, and so I wandered away from my aunt. After a few moments, I heard music, and came upon a boy sitting on a rock watching a herd of goats. He was singing and playing his guitar. Oh, 
that's a lovely song. Where did you come from, little girl? Who are you anyway? My name is Heidi, and I come from Manfeld. What's a baby like you doing up here on the mountain all alone? <laughs> I'm not alone. I'm with you and your beautiful goat. Be serious. Are you lost? Well, I don't think so. Well, where are you going? I'd like not to go anywhere right now. At least until my aunt finishes resting. And after your aunt finishes resting, where are you going? To my grandfather's. How many goats do you have? The mean old man on the mountain is your grandfather? I don't know that he's mean. Oh, please tell me about your goats. Where are you taking them? I don't know why anyone would want to visit that terrible old man. I'm not going to visit him. I'm going to live with him. <gasps> You're fooling me. No. My aunt is taking me to my grandfather's house, and I'm to live with him. That's terrible. What's so terrible about it? Oh, I think it's so beautiful up here. But nobody's ever lived with him. He's a hermit. He never speaks to anyone. Mm, please tell me about your goats. Do you own them all? They're all mine, but I don't own any of them. They belong to the people in Dorfley, and two belong to your grandfather. Oh, which two? Which two? Schwanley and Barley. The brown one there and the white one beside. Oh, they're wonderful. Oh, they're so soft and gentle. What do you do with them all? And what's your name? My name's Peter. Some call me Goat Peter. I pick the goats up in the village each morning, then your grandfather's, and I take them up into the high meadows where they can graze each day. And then I bring them to their homes at night. But don't you have one or two of your own? They're all mine. I told you that. I spend much more time with them than their owners do. When I'm at my grandfather's, will you take me with you someday to the high meadow? I doubt very much if your grandfather would let you go. And since you're a girl, I don't think I should take you anyway. Heidi? Heidi! I'm here, Aunt Dutty. Where are you, naughty child? Right here with Peter and his wonderful goats. Oh, aren't they wonderful, Aunt Dutty? And two of them belong to Grandfather. That white one there is Schwanli, and, and the brown one is Barley. You are a thoughtless and bad child to go wandering off like you did. Come on at once. So on up the mountain we continued, and finally came to my grandfather's hut. From the front of the little house there was a sweeping view of the valley below. Behind the hut stood three tall pine trees, and behind them the mountain continued up up to the bald, steep pinnacles where snow still clung. My grandfather was sitting on a bench in front of his house. He had very bushy eyebrows and a long beard. He looked very fierce, but I went right up to him. Good afternoon, grandfather. Well, well, what does this mean? I wish you good day, Uncle. This is Tobias and Adelaide's child. You will scarcely recognize her since you haven't seen her since she was a year old. Ah, and what has she to do with me? She must stay here with you. Impossible. She's just a baby. I can't take care of her. You must, Uncle. She has no place else. I must go now. With that, Aunt Dete started down the mountain almost at a run, and I was left alone with my grandfather. For a long time, he sat silent, smoking his pipe. I sat quietly too, smelling the sweet tobaccos.